Welcome back third graders. It's time for chapter four, lesson two. Our purpose today is to better understand that severe weather can cause damage and to begin thinking about how people can actually be prepared to minimize that damage. In today's lesson, you'll need something to write with and something to write on. You may pause the video here to go make sure you have what you need. We're gonna start by discussing some natural hazards. Think back to our last lesson. Do you remember this tool you can see here? What natural hazards did we investigate with it? You may remember the symbol at the top showed blizzards and then hurricanes and we also looked at lightning. Remember what we found out about where natural hazards happen? We discovered a pattern to those locations. Remember our investigation question. How can people prepare for natural hazards? And here's a reminder of our chapter four question. How can the WPO prepare for natural hazards that might damage their offices? Remember as meteorologists, we're trying to figure out how people can prepare for natural hazards. The Wildlife Protection Organization wants that information so that they can protect their office building from damage. The next activity will help us understand the difference between mild weather and severe weather, which is often responsible for natural hazards. There are different types of natural hazards and there are patterns to where they occur. But how bad is the weather during a natural hazard? I'm gonna describe three different weather situations to you. And as you listen, I want you to visualize what it would be like if you were there. I will describe three scenes. If you want, you can close your eyes and listen as I describe them. Try to imagine what it feels like, what sounds you hear, what you see, and maybe what you're wearing. Make a picture in your mind to go along with my words. Here is scene one. Imagine you are outside flying a kite. It's windy enough to get your kite up in the air. The wind pushes your clothing around. Leaves are moving a little bit on the branches. Light rain starts to fall, but it's not too bad, so you continue flying your kite. You're glad you're wearing a light jacket. Here is scene two. Now imagine that the rain starts coming down harder. The branches of the trees are moving, and you decide, decide it's time to reel in your kite and go home. Once you're inside, you can see the rain splattering on the windows and puddles forming on the ground. Every few minutes, a gust of wind blows a tree branch against the window and it makes a scraping sound. You curl up on the couch with a blanket and you're glad that you are inside and out of the rain. Here is scene three. Now imagine that the rain is pounding on the roof. Water has collected huge puddles and cars look like they're swimming. Tree branches are blown furiously by the wind and some break off and fall to the ground. The fallen branches are blocking walkways and streets and pulling down power lines. A tree falls onto a nearby home and breaks part of the roof. Those are your three scenes. How did the weather change from the first scene to the last one? I bet you noticed in the third scene, more water, stronger winds, and damage to a building that means the weather was more severe. Here is a really important vocabulary word we've talked about, and this is one you might want to write down. You can always pause the video if needed so that you write it down. You can even make a drawing so that you know what this means. A natural hazard is severe weather or another natural event that can cause damage. In the example we just imagined, the wind and rain caused the trees to fall and the streets to flood. Let's start our next activity, Reading Dangerous Weather Ahead. This book has more information about hurricanes, blizzards, and lightning. It also talks about what people can do to be prepared for these weather events and how to stay safe. Remember as I read, I want you to be visualizing everything. You can always pause and observe. There's a lot of maps in this book if you want to pause the video, you can really observe what those maps are showing. Okay, I will see you in the next slide for our reading.